This is Arts Alive. I'm Linda Philippi, and my guest, Bill Miller, and I are going to continue the conversation we began off air about his fascinating new project, and it's all about tattoos. So, welcome. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as you know, I've, I've done photo essays before oh, yeah. in town uh, on uh, historical, architectural, political, um, cultural, mm -hmm. uh, but nothing like this. And uh, it actually started out when I was thinking of another subject. I was gathering images for a photo essay on unusual uses of the American flag. Okay. Okay. And as I was gathering images, I thought, I need a tattoo of an American flag. I need someone who puts it on their body. Oh, right. Of so course. Uh, I started looking. And then, so I started actually visiting some of the tattoo parlors here in town and okay. talking to the artists and to people. And the more I talked to them, the more I decided that I'll shelf that for the time being. Okay. I want to look more into tattoos. Isn't that amazing? I want the human aspect. Sure. And uh, also the more I got interested and involved, and this started probably the last week in September. Um, it was interesting. I sent an email out to all of the Rotarians in... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in McMinnville. Show us your old Navy tattoos. Well, it was kind of like that, but no, it was more like, this is what I'm thinking about doing. Do you guys know anybody who has tattoos, or do mm -hmm. you have any? And I'd like to. And I thought, well, this proved interesting. I mean, this mm -hmm. was to both of the clubs, so a lot of people. Within a half an hour, my first response was, isn't that terrible? All those people on food stamps with thousands of dollars oh, of right, tattoos. right, right, right. And I went, whoa, wait a minute, that's not what I was asking about. But you know what it did? It fixed in me what I'd been hearing from anybody about the bias and mm -hmm. stereotyping mm -hmm. of people who wear tats. I think it's kind of a, one of those polarizing things. People tend to really think they're cool or really think they're awful. I don't think there's a lot of people that say, yeah, it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. Well, you that's know? actually what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. As I, like I say, as I was developing the idea, and then I got my first negative responses to it. Okay, yeah. And then you said, hey, I'm onto something. Yeah. And, sure. And then I started talking more to the artists and to the people, and I found they were so open, and they were excited that someone wanted to show the art, and it is an art, mm -hmm. and to uh, share it with everyone. So... What I decided to do is to develop a photo essay, but a true photo essay. I am photographing tattoos in an, an artistic manner, okay, focusing on the art of the tattoo. It's, it's a coffee table book. Well, actually, that's what Leanne brought up the other day. <laughs> She's quite the business person, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, so, yeah, it might well be. You never can tell. Uh, so, uh, we um, decided to shoot the tattoos in an artistic manner, but then... Each tattoo will have an explanation by the person who wears it. Okay. And it's going to be their chance to explain why they would wear a tattoo, mm -hmm. what this tattoo means to them, uh, why is it important, uh, positive or negative, anything they want to talk about. Sure. And then what we're going to do is mount a show, which is a very flexible date right now, it's probably in May. Okay. And that show will be mounted at... Uh, I don't know what they'll call a new business. Pacific Frame, I guess, still. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, when they're new building. In the new building. Of course. That's going to be wonderful. Yes. Yeah, so Leanne and Noel offered to use their place. Nice. And so we'll be holding it at Pacific Frame mm -hmm. uh, in May. And um, that's going to be the show. It'll be, I think, fascinating, I hope, interesting at least for those folks. And the idea is just that. It is to knock down barriers of bias, mm -hmm. to remove some of the stereotyping, to a greater acceptance that tattoos are not evil unto themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm finding, like I say, the more I go about this, the more people are coming forward. Uh, also, I decided that, you know, what else can we make of this? Who else would like to partner in this? Mm -hmm. So I went to Tanya Tompkins, who's the professor and, I guess, chair of psychology at Linfield. Okay. And I had... Um, I sent her an email and didn't know her, didn't know how she'd respond. Mm -hmm. And I got this wonderful response back that they were fascinated with the idea. I think it's great. Uh, that she herself had done a lot of work in bias against transgender and AIDS. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. and so was involved quite a bit. In fact, the year before, a senior had done a paper on our multiple tattoos addictive personality. Now, the interesting thing is when I mentioned that to several of the tattoo artists, they all went, duh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and that's the layman's term. <laughs> yes, that's the layman's term. <laughs> duh, of course it's addictive. For just our empirical findings And of course, and reveal. They're, 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 look at me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, so Linfield is now involved, and what they're doing is they want to develop some tools that we'll use during the show. Mm -hmm. So that people coming in, viewing the show, will be able to, and I don't know how they'll do this, but to either measure bias coming in or out or both, mm -hmm. uh, to get a feel of the audience. At the same time, they want to expand this onto an online bias. So they'll be taking all of my images. Oh, interesting. Uh, and all of the text and putting it online through their department. Mm -hmm and opening it up to students and faculty and anyone who visits the Linfield uh, website. You know what I think is interesting about your project is, well, uh, on a lot of levels it's interesting, but you know, so, sometimes you know you'll just see a person walking down the street and there they are and you may not know them and they've got, you know, a tattoo. So if you see it, clearly they've chosen to put it on a place that's, you know, going to be going to be seen right mm -hmm. i mean because you could hide it someplace you could stick it up here and you know wear a sleeve but if you're putting it like right here for example you want people to see you and without knowing the person or knowing their story or their backstory or anything about them all you see is that and so you think how how much thought goes into choosing the image because essentially you're putting that out there for everybody like you are the the, the living, breathing, walking piece of art that everybody's looking at. Your body's the canvas. But I think sometimes it's true when you hear the reasons, like, you know, we were talking about that, some of the reasons why people choose the images they choose, where they choose to put them for whatever reason, and, and you hear the story, it, it just brings a whole another dimension to what you think you see. It, it is. The tattoo is only the vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's everything behind the tattoo. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, to me, why I feel so honored mm -hmm. really doing this. Because I have people sit and tell me their deepest, darkest, most mm -hmm. hurtful things that have happened in their lives and why they wear a tattoo because of it. And the interesting thing is, even though it may be a negative, it might be abandonment, mm -hmm. it's death, it's surviving a terrible injury mm -hmm. or disease and yet from that it's really positive it is the surviving of the joy of being oh alive. sure right so while people see a negative mm -hmm. or may, they even may thought it was done for a negative reason it's not it's a proclamation of living now Bill I know that you we've also got um, Mike and Liz Santanay are, are filming some of this happening they're doing a documentary about right. your project. Right. That was another thing we did, and I'm glad you mentioned that, because mm -hmm. I uh, called Liz and Mike up, and I said, hey, this is what we're doing. Would you guys like to be part of it, too? Sure. And they, like me, got excited. Sure. And we've actually, they've come over and they've shot some film with me, but we just spent this past weekend, Saturday and Sunday, doing shoots in the afternoons. Oh, I think that's great. And uh, we went over to Rocky Smith's Pendragon Tattoo Parlor mm -hmm. and spent the afternoon there on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we went over to um, uh, Spa Bliss. They have Dave Birch has his uh, DOA tattoos. And I okay. want you to know DOA does not stand for what you think it does. Okay. Okay. Disciples of Art. And I think you brought some images to share with us. I did. So I if Mr. Images. Music, Paul, can roll some images, okay. we can... Maybe talk our way through Let's a few see of them. Let's if we Let's can look at a couple of yeah, those. Yeah, there we go. There's our logo, ink. And I thought that was a, a good one to I use. I like it. Because that's what they say, I got inked. Right. Yeah, that's Rocky and actually doing a tattoo mm -hmm. on someone's shoulder. That was on Saturday, actually. And I, I guess I was just going to mention about the spending the thousands of dollars on tattoos. <laughs> if it's permanent, you better spend some money. Because you, you don't want it, you don't want the cut rate tattoo. No, you don't. <laughs> you really don't. And you know, both do. You know, both Rocky and Dave do wonderful work. Mm -hmm. What else we got? This is here's. There we go. There's Mike and Liz. 
Perfect. That's Rocky's studio upstairs, mm -hmm. and uh, they did a lot of videoing, and they're doing what I'm doing with photos, with stills, and the printed word. They're creating a documentary on that same thing. Well, you know, and they've won an award for the documentary they did about the, you know, the, uh, the pottery. Okay. So they're actually award-winning filmmakers. They are, and I think if this turns out the way we expect, they will win another one. Oh, I think it's amazing. I mean, it's they're great. excited about yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Let's see. Ah, upstairs at Rockies, the ambiance of that place alone was a throwback to the 40s and 50s. I can see that, yes. But there's Liz, and that's one of our folks. Not only do they shoot them, but they also get background tape so they can run it mm -hmm. as they're showing images and that. Uh, and we just had folks coming and you know, presenting what they had to say. Let's see what else we've got coming up here. Ah, those are our two artists. Nice. That's Rocky Smith on the left, and that's Dave Burge on the right from mm -hmm. DOA. Um, and I, I need to clarify that while people look at a tattoo artist and they are just covered in tattoos, that's what you do. That's your life. Mm -hmm. These two men are artists. They think of themselves as artists, they live as artists, mm -hmm. and they create art. And I can't say enough about them. Both were just very helpful and open, and um, they just really helped us a lot. Here's some of the ideas that come across. You know, somebody were to see this, you'd, see, you'd think this guy was a prison guy. Mm -hmm. Self-made with a skull. And a skull in many tattoos doesn't mean what people think it means. It means surviving death or taunting death or anything but an evil or mm -hmm. bad thing. And self-made, this, uh, this fella is actually um, just learning the art of tattoo. Hmm. And, but he came from a background where he had no skills and he wants to be an artist. He is a self-made man. Wow. Oh, I love this. This is, he'll tell you, you know, I am a redneck, you know, down-home, all-American Marine. I was going to say, he's got to be a Marine if he's got he, Iwo Jima on him. He is a Marine, true to life, and, mm -hmm. uh, and he lives it. And by the way, you never tell a Marine that they're an ex-Marine. Mm -hmm. You are never an ex-Marine. Exactly. They are a Marine for life. Uh, and, you know, but literally, the guy's, you know, in his 40s, um, you know, Desert Storm type trooper. Mm -hmm. um, we talked not politics, but America, and I saw this man's eyes just missed oh. over. Just the emotion involved in all of these tattoos. You know, Bill, I want you. I, I, I don't want you to miss the opportunity to read. So maybe okay. we'll at least show the last images. Maybe you can read all the right. uh, your your poem because we've only got about a minute left. Uh, this is from a young man who. Um, is a walking book of tattoos, and mm -hmm. I think he explains it best what's so important. It says, the way I look at it, no matter what in life I gain or lose, no matter what struggles I go through, somebody can look at me and they can see a story. The things I've chosen to put on my body tell things about me that I rarely share. They are emotional. They're a way to let the world know who I am. And that is something nobody can ever take away from me. Wow. That's really moving. That's really meaningful. And that's sure. the way I feel about this whole project. And I can't wait to see the finished product and the show and the documentary film. And thank you so much for being here today. Yes, and let people know if you have tats and a tail, I would love. <laughs> Just send me a message on Facebook. Tats and a tail. I like that. Okay, great. We can find you through the show, too. So perfect. All right. Thank you so much for the mm -hmm. opportunity.